Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel GST, or the Grand Shopping Tote, in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, I do have tons of eye candy for you guys today, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover. Uh, starting with the first question from Christina Ferraro, hopefully I said that correctly. What is your unicorn bag? Not sure if this has been been asked before but I would love to know uh, great question and as far as my unicorn bag I would have to say that it is a red pebbled leather handbag with gold hardware from I have no idea which brand <laughs> to be honest and I think the reason why uh, my unicorn bag is going to be a red bag is because I'm so indecisive and I am so um, you know I haven't found the right combination I haven't found the right red bag to add to my collection. I have had colored bags in the past. They didn't end up working out. So I'm a little apprehensive about that, uh, you know, going, going for a colored bag. But I sincerely feel that my unicorn bag is going to be a red bag, for sure, you know? And like I said before, I can't decide which fashion house uh, because there are a lot of uh, houses out there that have some amazing, uh, some amazing reds, uh, but they might have a feature that I'm not necessarily too keen on or they don't necessarily check off all the marks, you know what I mean? And I already have my holy grail bag, which is the Chanel Jumbo, but the unicorn bag, I think it has to be a red bag. It has to be, you know, just because I've talked about adding a red bag for so long. My goodness, <laughs> you know, and the reds that I had before, they were beautiful, but they just didn't make my heart sing. And I think that a unicorn bag should not only check off all the marks, it should make your heart sing to the point where the minute you see it, you just think, that's it that's the one, you know, type of thing. So <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm curious. I'm, it's almost like, um, I, I don't even know what bag is going to, to fill those, you know, uh, to fill all those check, check marks off. So I'm excited to see, <laughs> but a unicorn bag will have to be a red bag, but I don't know what brand, how sad, right? <laughs> Uh, but great question. Uh, Priscilla G, I am looking for a Louis Vuitton black bag. I am between the Alma BB in Epi leather and the Pouchette Matisse in Emprunt leather. I already have both in canvas. What is your opinion about them? Leather aspect. If you had to choose, which one would it be? Uh, great question. Both of them are beautiful. I love the Alma BB in Epi leather and I love the Pouchette Matisse in the Emprunt leather. Um, I'd have to say that they both, uh, they both offer a type of versatility that the other one doesn't have. And what I mean by that is that the Alma, uh, the Alma BB and the Epi leather, it's really great, um, to transition from day to night. So it has that versatility aspect, but the Pouchette Matisse and the Emprunt leather, I feel that it's maybe a little bit more casual. It's versatile in the sense that you can wear it crossbody on your shoulder. There's a few more ways that you can wear it versus the Alma BB. Uh, and you can also carry a lot more with you. So I think that if you want a black bag, that's maybe a little bit more for every day or maybe something a little bit more casual, even though I think that both of the leathers really elevate the bag versus the canvas versions that they are available in. Uh, but I think that between the two, the Epi is a little bit easier to go, um, you know, to be a little bit more dressed up versus the Emprunt leather. Uh, so I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think that, like I said before, I think that they're both great, but I feel that with the Epi leather, it's just a tad, like a like a tad dressier versus the emprunt is just maybe just a smidge just a tiny smidge um more casual than the epi when you put the two and two together uh but it's all a matter of personal preference it, like i said before if you want something maybe a little bit more every day that is uh extremely carefree then i would go for the emprunt uh pochette matisse and also you're able to carry a lot more with you as i mentioned uh previously but if you want something maybe that if you want to wear it to a formal event, uh, something, I mean, the Alma BB it is a small bag, but it can still carry quite a bit. Like I've said before, it's very deceiving. Uh, so for that aspect, plus you also have the Epi leather that is incredibly carefree as well. So both leathers are carefree. Both of them are dressier than their monogram cousins. Uh, but between the two, the Alma BB is dressier, the Pichette Matisse is a little bit more casual. So hopefully that was able to help, but either one I think is a great addition to any collection uh, just because, you know, the, the leather aspect of them is so incredibly carefree and so beautiful. So hopefully that was able to help.
Next question from 408 California 408, my very good friend and fellow YouTuber. Make sure and check out her channel. She is amazing. Uh, all right, she has two questions. The first one is, is there a difference between the Chanel caviar bags? Meaning I have heard that the leather is either a matte or shiny. Uh, great question. And uh, usually when it comes to caviar leather, there's so many different types of variations. There's soft matte, there is regular matte, there's shiny, there's iridescent. There's just so much to choose from. Uh, but I do have a few examples that I wanted to share with you because I do have two classic silhouettes. I have the jumbo uh, and I also have the GST. So you can kind of see a little bit of a difference. Um, personally, I think that both of them are great. I think that both of the, I just love caviar leather. I love how carefree it is. Uh, and I really just am a big fan of the pebbles. Uh, but I have noticed that on the shiny aspect of caviar leather, it almost has like a gray sheen to it if you hold it at an angle. So there is the GST. This has the shiny caviar leather. And you can see that uh, usually um, in photos, this really ends up picking up that, that grayish tint to it, that grayish sheen that I was talking about. Uh, and then here I have my jumbo and this one is a little bit more matte this one it also has a little bit of that gray tone but somehow i feel that it's just more of a flat black compared to the gst and when i put them side by side you'll really be able to see the difference uh, you can see how uh, the gst seems to catch the light a little bit easier than the jumbo and my medium large is the same as my gst which is kind of funny uh, but i feel that when it comes to the caviar leather, um, that the matte one is just a little bit rougher. It's a little bit harder uh, versus this one. It seems that the quilts are a little bit softer. They're a little bit poofier versus this one. You know what I mean? Like this one just seems like the quilts are a little flatter. Um, let me show, let me see. There we go. You can see a little bit better. So this one just looks like it's just not too far off, uh, off the base of the, of the quilts. You know what I mean? Uh, so there's that, but I feel that the matte one maybe wears a little bit better over time just because it doesn't seem to crease as easily. And I say that very, very loosely because when it comes to caviar leather, depending on the bag and depending on the structure, uh, they don't necessarily have to crease, but sometimes I feel that you might be able to see the creases a little bit more in the shiny version just because I feel that it's a little bit softer. Uh, and I also wanted to share this caviar leather. This is the O case that I recently got, and this is the matte caviar leather. So as you can see, this one is incredibly softer. It feels like the quilts are a little bit more noticeable and the quilts kind of remind me of a lambskin version when it comes to this type of mat. Uh, they released the Le Boy bags in a soft matte caviar leather. And I also feel that those, even though the Le Boy bag has a really great structure, I feel that those end up wearing a little bit quicker. I feel that you might end up seeing, um, you know, like if I was to wear lotion, if I had oil on my hands or anything like that, uh, you might be able to pick it up more on this type of matte leather versus, you know, this type of matte leather. But all in all, I think that both of them are great. I think that they both offer a little bit of a variation of each of the caviar leathers, kind of like Louis Vuitton and the monogram canvas, because the monogram canvas, depending on, um, you know, on the role that they use to make the piece, sometimes the, the lettering or the flowers might end up being a little bit more on the caramel side or they might have a little bit of a greenish tint to them so it's you know i think that they're both great i think that they're, they're both wonderful and uh, i did also have a question about someone asking if i end up going more for matte or shiny and to be honest it really doesn't matter to me. I'm more so about getting <laughs> getting the item that I am looking for. So hopefully that was able to answer that question. And the second question, I'm really, really liking the reissue. I know that it is a double flap, but I have heard that the structure on the reissue has less structure than the jumbo single flap and that the reissue looks narrow and pointed at the top. What are your thoughts? Uh, I am a big fan of the reissue. I have added it to my wish list and I have been doing a ton of research on it. My goodness, I can't seem to get it out of my head. Uh, and to be honest, um, I think that when it comes to the reissue, because of the structure loss that it has, really comes from uh, the worn leather that it has. And even though the jumbo single flap is known for losing its structure just because it doesn't have the double flap such as this one does, um, I think that the reissue has, you know, over time, the more and more that you use it, the more and more it'll end up just kind of slouching a little bit. Uh, but there's just something about it. There's, there's a type of, I don't know what it is, there's a type of look that it 
it has and normally when it comes to um, you know to the worn leather look I prefer that on furniture or like an armchair but I never really go for it with handbags but when it comes to the reissue there's just something <laughs> that I am just attracted to I don't know what it is I love the history aspect of it and uh, as far as it being pointy I think that because this does have a double flap, you're able to see that it has a little bit more of a like a like a table look to it, you know, and then it just kind of jets off on the front versus the other one. It has a little bit more of a sleeker design. So it might end up losing its structure over time a little bit. Oh, it'll end up losing its structure a little bit more over time, even with it being a jumble flap, just because of the type of leather that they use that uh, that age leather. Uh, but even with that said there i mean that bag is gorgeous <laughs> it is gorgeous and i keep going back and forth do i want gold hardware do i want silver hardware i have no idea uh, but i am totally with you it is a fantastic fantastic bag and uh, hopefully i am able to add it to my collection um, very soon who knows uh, but great questions and hopefully i was able to help uh, all right, next one from Nadia Masood. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, I am thinking of buying a Chanel bag between the Chanel GST or the classic or the Chanel classic double flap jumbo. But I want to know which one is heavier than the other because you have both. So can you please tell me the weight difference between them? Uh, wonderful question. And yes, I ended up weighing them and uh, the GST weighs in at two pounds, 10.2 ounces and the jumbo weighs in at two pounds 10.5 ounces so it is a very very small difference and to be honest i thought that the jumbo would be a little bit heavier just because i feel that i don't know i like when you put when i put them on my hand this one just feels a lot heavier than this one does so hopefully that was able to help next question from sigourney savory hopefully i said that correctly and pally 1240 they had similar ones I'm not a fan of Michael Kors and not happy to find out that they're buying Jimmy Choo. I love Jimmy Choo and I think that the quality will suffer. What are your thoughts? Wonderful question and I am also a big fan of Jimmy Choo, especially their footwear, even though I don't own any. And when it comes to Michael Kors buying Jimmy Choo, I mean, Michael Kors is such a powerhouse when it comes to contemporary brands. Uh, and I feel that by them buying out that side of luxury goods, I think that Jimmy Choo will have more of a positive influence on Michael Kors than the other way around. I feel that it'll end up elevating the contemporary brand even more so, and I really feel that it'll end up catapulting it to a completely different category. Because right now, when it comes to contemporary brands, um, usually it's Michael Kors, Coach, Kate Spade, those come to mind, or Tory Burch. But I feel that, again, by them having that other side of luxury goods, that it'll be a completely completely different ball game for them. And I don't think that Jimmy Choo will end up suffering. And even though I haven't purchased a handbag from Michael Kors or Small Leather Goods, I do have some of their watches and I do have some of their perfumes. And I do like, you know, certain aspects of the fashion house. Uh, but I don't think that it'll be a bad thing. I mean, at least I'm hoping for that to, you know, to be the case. Uh, I was reading a lot of articles. A lot of people were really upset. Other people were really excited to see the new chapter of Michael Kors because I feel that by having such um, by having such a name behind them, I feel that it kind of pushes them to do a little bit more. And, uh, you know, like I said before, at least that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping for. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic. I know some people uh, had mentioned some of their, um, you know, some of their feelings on previous Minx Monday Q&A, but I also wanted to bring it up to light. That's why I wanted to, to share this question with you guys. But again, if you, you know, whether it's good or bad, let us know in the comment section down below. There's never a wrong opinion or anything like that. A lot of you know that my comment section is incredibly, incredibly incredibly friendly, uh, you know, and I would just really like to hear your thoughts, but uh, I don't foresee it having a negative effect on Jimmy Choo at all. I think that Jimmy Choo will stay true to what they are, to what they provide and the quality that they are, but it'll just be a better spin on Michael Kors and maybe it'll end up uh, bringing it, like I said before, to a different ball game to where people might be a little bit more inclined to buy Michael Kors that's maybe didn't want to buy Michael Kors in the past. Who knows? But um, those are just my thoughts. So again, I'd love to hear your guys' um, comments uh, down below. Uh, all right, next question from BB. 
If you would travel to a country where you wouldn't want to bring one of your designer bags, which bag would you take? I'm going to South Africa soon for three months and don't know which bag to use for my travel. For First and foremost, uh, that is awesome and I wish you safe travels. And to be honest, I have thought about this before because <laughs> because there's some times when I'm just thinking, what, am I, what bag am I going to wear if I don't want to bring any Lux goodies or anything like that? And I think I found the solution. I think I know exactly which bag I would end up taking. And that is the Longchamp Le Pliage uh, Large Tote. This is in the khaki color. Uh, I have not, actually I've used this bag once uh, since I purchased it, but I am dying to use it. And the reason why I would have to say the Longchamp is because it is such a great bag. Uh, I mean, I did a ton of research on it before we left for London. And uh, I mean, they have, they're incredibly carefree. You don't have to worry about any leather on oxidizing. You don't have to worry about anything like that. It's very, very lightweight. So I do love that aspect as well. And this is a large tote, like I said. So this one fits quite a bit in here. This is currently stuffed with air paper. Um, but you don't really have to think about it too much. You don't have to worry about it too much. Plus the price point that Longchamp Le Pliages have uh, is great. You know, you don't have to worry about bringing a 2000 3000 or several hundred dollar bag with you. I mean, these end up retailing for... Um, I ended up paying um, a lot less than I would here in the United States just because I got it in London. But I think that they're 128, 100, 148 maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, here in the States. But still, you're, I mean, you're paying 148 or 128 dollars if you buy it here in the United States. Uh, but you still have that great quality. It's very carefree, very lightweight. And I just think that it's one of those bags. I really foresee myself buying more Longchamp. Uh, bags in the Le Pliage line just because I'm a fan of them. <laughs> I am, you know what I mean? I don't know what it is. And um, yes, I do keep it stuffed because it makes <laughs> it makes the paranoia in me a little bit better. Uh, but this is what I would recommend. Uh, great, great travel bag. I know a lot of people when they end up traveling, uh, even when they do have their luxury goods with them, they end up using the Le Pliage line for um, for, air, for airplane travel or when they're sightseeing or anything like that because you don't have to worry about the you know the hundreds or thousands as I mentioned before on the other Lux goodies and you can still get great quality with that so that's what I would recommend uh, but I am dying dying to use it and I feel that it's really understated too it doesn't have a whole bunch of bells and whistles it's just very simple very very awesome so i'm so happy that i added a long shop to my collection so hopefully that was able to help and like i said before safe travels when you go to south africa uh all right next question from terry moskowitz hopefully i said that correctly do you wear designer clothes as well? Would you say you spend much money on your wardrobe? <laughs> Love this question. And uh, do I wear designer clothes as well? Not at all. Do I spend a lot of money on my wardrobe? Nope. To be honest, uh, my clothing is the least amount of money that I spend on a certain on that category. Does that make sense? So um, first I spend, you know, I spend most of my mad money on uh, luxury goods, then it's accessories, then it's footwear, then it's clothing. Uh, but no, for me, I like to buy my clothes um, at Zara when they're on sale, H&M, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. You will always find me at TJ Maxx or Marshalls buying um, shorts or t-shirts or anything like that just because, I don't know, <laughs> it makes more sense to me. And sometimes I feel that I have my clothing for ages. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how that works. Like this shirt, I think I've had for, for an eternity. And usually you'll notice on my videos, I don't really have a lot of different tops that I end up wearing just because, I mean, even though I have <laughs> I have a little more clothes than I think I should, but I almost end up sticking to certain ones. I don't know why. I don't know what that is. Uh, sometimes I call them my uniforms just because I feel a little bit more comfortable, but nope. I don't spend, <laughs> I don't, I mean, that's the least amount of money that I spend uh, as far as the category goes, and that is uh, clothing, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but that's crazy that I spend a lot more money on accessories, such as jewelry. Jewelry, my goodness, whether it's fashion jewelry or whatever kind of jewelry, I'm just attracted to it. I guess it's the magpie in me. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but great question. And next one from live in cc hopefully i said that correctly no that's wrong uh live in yc 
Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, there we go. Any update on your thoughts on Goyard St. Louis totes? Uh, love this question. And when it comes to the Goyard, it is still on my wish list. Uh, it's farther down on my wish list. You know, I talked about it on my last wish list video that it's something that I wanted to add to my collection. I was always, I'm, I'm still attracted to the bag. Uh, but I think that for Goyard, I might end up going for a small leather good first just to see how it wears. And I've said this before, usually when it comes to me venturing into new fashion houses, I like to start off with small leather goods first to get a feel for them, to see if I end up liking them before I end up spending uh, a little bit more money on them. Uh, so I think that I'm, I'm going to end up going that route. And to be honest, I might end up doing the same thing with with uh, Dior. I know I talked about it a few, it was either last week or a few weeks back, uh, that I wanted to add the Dior wallet on chain to my collection, but I think I might end up going for a, for a wallet first or a small other good just to see if that's the route that I want to take. Uh, it just makes a little bit, you know, it makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, and especially because I end up interacting with small leather goods a lot more than the handbag. Uh, so that way I could really see the wear and tear that it ends up have, uh, that it ends up happening, ends up having, my goodness, uh, t -t today, Junior. Um, but Goyard, I still love it. I still think it's beautiful. Every time I see it, my jaw just drops because I think it is a gorgeous, gorgeous tote. Uh, but it's, for now, it's on the, on the hold wait list. So we will see. Only time will tell if I end up adding one to my collection. Who knows? Uh, and the last question from Cape Cod Bell. I am seeking your opinion on getting my mon getting a Mon Mono Speedy. Do you recommend the Classic 30 or the 30 Bandolier? I can make a case for both. Curious since you now have the Speedy 25 Bandolier. Uh, wonderful question. And when it comes to a Mon Mono Speedy. Do I prefer the 30 or the 30 Bandolier? When it comes to the Bandolier in general, I end up preferring the 25 on my body frame. I like the way that it looks a lot more than the 30. The 30 just seems to be a little bit, um, it's not as proportionate to my body frame, I don't think. Uh, so I've always been a big fan of the 25 and had the World Tour you know, became, uh, came available in the 25, then I would definitely have gone for that one. Uh, but when it comes to the Mon Mono, I think that because of the paint that the stripes have, if you end up getting stripes on the bag, and for me personally, I end up wearing so many, I w end up wearing jeans so often that if I was to use a Mon Mono uh, Speedy, if, you know, if I was to use the bandolier, I'd end up putting it crossbody. I know that I would end up having a lot of color transfer from my jeans on the paint, on the backside of the bag. So I feel that when it comes to Mon Mono, for my own personal preference, I end up going for, you know, I like the 30, which is right there. I prefer it better in a hand carry classic style because I can really control where the handbag ends up going. I know that I can kind of just put it uh, on my side and I don't really have to worry about it rubbing up on my clothing too much, whether it's my top or whether it's my jeans, again, because I end up wearing jeans so often, uh, or denim so often, I should say. So between the two, I personally like the 30 better, uh, the classic 30, and uh, for bandolier, I always end up preferring the 25. Uh, but if you like the 30 and if you want something maybe a little bit more, uh, definitely it's a lot more versatile than the classic Speedy. Uh, and let's say that you don't wear jeans as often as I do or you don't really have uh, dark clothing, then I would end up going for the 30 uh, bandolier uh, because it is still a great size. But just for me and the way that it looks on me, I think that it almost almost looks like luggage when I'm carrying it or when I have it on crossbody. But um, it's all a matter of personal pref preference. I think that they're both beautiful. Uh, but for me, well, hands down, I would end up going for the classic just because I don't have to worry as much when it comes to color transfer on it. And I haven't had any issues with mine either. It still looks uh, as great as it did when I first got it. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for our Minx Monday Q&A. We had some awesome questions. I hope I was able to give you guys a little bit of insight. And like I said before, I always want to hear your guys' um, thoughts on anything that we discuss, on anything that we talk about. There's no right or wrong answer. Just like what I say is my two cents and it might be wrong. You might disagree, but it doesn't matter. We're all a big family. We can all have, you know, we can all have a uh, discussion on here. Uh, now for this week, I am hoping to get four videos out. Uh, I have my July favorites because it is now August. Uh, so I have my July favorites. I have a surprise video for you guys. And I also have my wish list video that I will be putting up later this week. So uh, fingers crossed that I can get all four of those out. Um, but yeah, so that is this week's lineup. So thank you guys again so, so much for watching, for the wonderful questions, for being a part of my channel. And I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.